So if you've been around my channel for any amount of time, you've probably noticed that I really like tugs. No shit. This beautiful sister series to Thomas the Tank Engine may have had only one season, but I adore this wonderful show just as much. And so today, I'm going to review and rank every episode. I should point out that for the first four episodes, I'm primarily talking about the 20 minute VHS versions but I will only mention stuff that I find interesting from the 15 minute cuts. If I don't mention a 15 minute cut, then it's because I don't have anything to say about it. Be sure to let me know your own personal rankings, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring Toby's bell for more videos like this in the future. Now then, with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so starting off, we have the pilot episode to the series, Sunshine. Here we are introduced to our main cast and life within Big City Port. Since this is the pilot episode, it is rather simple in structure, and as a result, everything actually flows pretty nicely, and is easy to follow. The basic plot of this one is the Starfleet have the chance to bag the Ocean Liner contract, and are preparing to dock a liner known as the Duchess. Also, a new switcher tug called Sunshine has been drafted from upriver to help out with the extra workload. Their rivals, the Z-Stacks, find out about the stars gaining the contract and actively try to sabotage their attempts in winning it. During the docking operation, Zoran rams Sunshine into the back of the Duchess, causing a ruckus with Zoran stepping in to help out. Sunshine then runs away in shame. Later on, Tencent learns the truth and informs the others, then they all set out to find Sunshine. The episode ends on a beautiful note, with the newly repaired and repainted Sunshine being officially welcomed into the fleet. Although this episode is simple in structure, that's what I love about it. The new guy thinking you messed up but finds out he didn't isn't anything groundbreaking or new, but I do love the subtle aspects that are scattered throughout the episode. Almost every main character is introduced in this episode, and it does a great job at showing us each of their personalities. Take the stars for example. Tencent is cheeky, yet kind and hardworking. Big Mac is gruff and serious, yet also very friendly. OJ is the wise, experienced leader. Top Hat is a pompous snob. Warrior is the simple one. Hercules is a suave and gentle giant and Sunshine is the enthusiastic new guy who is keen to please. There's also a tiny detail that you don't often see people talk about in this episode. Izzy Gomez. We all know him as the sleazy tramper who is always trying to get a cheap toe. But he's the one who exposes what Zoran did. I think it's interesting that this little scene is the only one in the show that actually shows us some level of decency to him. We get to see a lot of the harbour in this episode, and learn a lot about how it works. Tugs, like Thomas, excels at world building. The nighttime shots are especially pleasing to the eye. The fog effects are stellar, and that boat horn terrified me the first time I watched this episode as a kid. <laughs> Overall, Sunshine is a good first impression to the series. The simple premise works to its advantage, and will surely leave first time viewers intrigued. Okay, episode 2, Pirate. Okay, so this is hands down the darkest episode of the show. So the plot is that one of Tencent's barges goes missing during the night, and others become suspicious, thinking that he may be selling off barge loads on the side. 
However, more barges start to go missing, and so the fleets actually band together in order to spring a trap on the thief. Grampus, wanting to help clear Tencent's name, discovers the thief, a tug who goes by the name of Sea Rogue. Turns out he's been stealing the barges in order to pay off some sort of debt for a pair of evil green-eyed tugs who are holding his uncle hostage and threatening to sink or kill him. If you can name one other kids show with a life or death hostage situation, then I'll be very impressed. Anyway, Grampus informs Tencent and Sunshine, they confront Sea Rogue, and together, they all work together to apprehend the villains and save the old man. This episode is fantastic, a real step up from the previous one. This episode has it all, from atmosphere, great and interesting characters, and even manages to work in some great humour. The 20 minute cut has stakeout scenes with both Top Hat and Warrior, as well as Zip and Zug, and both are hilarious to watch. As is the ending where Zip and Zug spook themselves and run off. Take note CGI Thomas, this is how you end an episode with the main characters laughing. The characters are all really strong in this one too. I especially like Sea Rogue. He comes across as really intimidating when we first encounter him, which is made even scarier since we see it from Grampus' perspective. But in the next scene with him, we learn that he isn't actually a bad guy, and is rather family oriented. Also just FYI, don't bother with the 15 minute version of this, it gets rid of the two stakeout scenes. Alright, next up is Trapped. This is one of the funniest episodes in the show. The concept is so ridiculous. The fleets are working upriver on logging detail. Meanwhile Zug and Zoran tow an old rusted tramper aiming to deliver it to the breaker's yard. However, they lose control of it and the hulking mass blocks the river. It's blocked the river! Of course it's blocked the river you idiot! The rest of the episode revolves around the tugs trying to figure out a way to clear the wreckage. Eventually, a pyromaniac Billy Shupak comes to the rescue and blows the tramper in half with dynamite. Kaboom! After that, the tugs get washed away in the current and Zoran gets marooned on a rock. <laughs> it's interesting that such a light-hearted episode comes right after a dark one. Billy Shupak is the highlight of the episode for sure which works wonders, given that this is his official introduction to the series. It's so funny seeing the big and gruff Big Mac get so uneasy around him. We also get introduced to Little Ditcher in this episode too, which is nice. The scene where the tugs try ramming the tramper is probably my favourite. Like, how did they not know it wouldn't work? Also, this episode has that iconic top hat gag. Oh, I say hello! Trapped is just a barrel of laughs from start to finish. Next is Regatta, aka 4th of July. So the annual 4th of July Regatta Parade is approaching and everyone is preparing and excited for it. All except Lily Lightship. Being anchored outside the port, she never gets to see the parade. The night before however, she gets her chance. A blind tramper strikes her bow and she starts to sink. Thankfully she's rescued in time by Grampus and brought in for repairs. After that, we find out that Grampus is going to be decommissioned by the Navy in target practice, as they consider him too old to be useful. The Star Tugs refuse to let this happen, so they parade out to the target range and rescue the little submarine. The episode has a nice happy ending, where we find out Lily was able to see the parade after all, and Grampus gets purchased by Captain Star, officially joining the fleet. This is... a huge episode. I love how it's one of the few episodes to focus on side characters as opposed to the main cast. Although Lily and Grampus are introduced in other episodes, this is the one where we really get to learn more about them. There's also a lot of great moments in this episode. There's a hilarious subplot with Warrior, where we learn that he's the garbage tug, and it's also the first time we get to hear that ever iconic danger theme, which is my personal favourite. We also get a lot of great character moments. I love how confident and snarling Zoran is, only to be immediately shut down when he gets confronted by Hercules. Grandpa spitting water at Blue Nose is also funny, and as I just said, the garbage scene with Warrior is hilarious. 
Also funnily enough, the 15 minute cut of this episode makes an interesting change with Top Hat. Normally, it isn't until High Tide where we see Top Hat give any major concern for anyone besides himself. But in the 15 minute cut, he's actually the one to go and see if Captain Style can get the Navy to spare Grampus. It's an interesting change that hints that he is a good guy deep down. I still prefer the 20 minute version of course, as the 15 completely gets rid of the garbage scene, which is a big no-no. Regatta is a crucial world building episode, one that should not be skipped. Now for the most action packed episode of the whole series, Munitions. This episode is so intense, so both the fleets are servicing naval manoeuvres and are tasked with bringing supplies to the naval tramper Krakatoa. Everyone is stressed out since they don't like the navy and it doesn't help that the officious naval tug Blue Nose keeps trying to order everyone about. During the night of the loading, this twit takes his privilege way too far, bumping a barge and causing a dockside fire that spreads rapidly. The rest of the episode is an action packed roller coaster as everyone tries to deal with the blaze. Blue Nose does get his just dues as he ends up with PTSD and is taken away by Grampus. The atmosphere and the dread throughout the first half is astonishing. You can already tell that something is going to happen, and when it finally does, panic spreads so fast. The briefing scene at the Stardock is also hilarious, with some of the best banter in the whole show. We also get to see just how heroic Tencent is when he not only saves Blue Nose, but also puts himself at risk to get rid of the flaming fuel barge. We also get to see the heroic size of Sunshine and Warrior, which could be hints of what's to come in a future episode. We also get to see another side to Zoran. Up until this point, we've seen him act as the antagonist, an unlikable arsehole who actively tries to sabotage his competition. But here, we see that he is in fact rather level headed, and is even willing to work alongside them and even agrees with them when others are acting like idiots, such as when he defends OJ and urges Tencent to get out of danger. Don't be a fool Tencent, get out of there! Zoran is an antagonist, not a villain. Blue Nose is another highlight of the episode. He may be an unlikable arsehole, but seeing him think that everyone will just play along is so funny. If I order you to jump, you jump! Piss off, big head! He's just that unlikable. Also, we have to talk about Big Mickey. Big Mickey, the biggest crane in the port, dies in this episode. Yep, you didn't hear that wrong, he outright dies here. Well, at least he does in the 20 minute VHS cut. In the 15 version, they add in an odd line about how he survives due to landing in shallow water. And lying in shallow water saved Big Mickey from both power and explosion. This was supposedly done to align with the airing order, since in that order he appears in High Tide, which aired after this episode. Personally, I prefer the 20 minute version. Obviously. It's just so much more impactful and doesn't have the awkwardness of Tencent and OJ talking about Big Mickey as if he still died in the TVS version. It took real skill to make that move. He saved us all for sure. When asking any Tugs fan what their favourite episode is, almost everyone places this one in either the top 5 or top 3 for good reason. Alright. Time to talk about my favourite character in his own namesake episode. Now this episode seems to be a mixed bag for many Tugs fans. On the one hand, it's the only episode that does not world build or add anything new to the lore of the series. Hell, we don't even learn anything new about the protagonist. For some, this makes the episode one of the weaker ones of the series. While I do understand this viewpoint, I personally don't agree, and I actually love the episode. I will admit, I am biased towards Warrior since he's my favourite character, but I do think the episode is enjoyable regardless. The plot of this one is the old docks are being rebuilt and the Stars and Zed stacks are competing for the contract to deliver the stone to the building sites. Warrior has been taken off garbage duty to help Big Mac, which proves difficult since Warrior is being his usual clumsy self, which causes its own series of issues. Meanwhile, Izzy Gomez decides that he's going to try and sail into port without a tow. As he does so, he runs aground and nearly capsizes. Tencent jumps in to save him 
but can't do it himself. Warrior arrives on scene and jumps into action saving the lives of everyone involved. The day is saved and Warrior is forgiven for his past mistakes. Ok so one thing I want to address is the aspects of Warrior's character. While we don't learn anything new about him, that we've learned in prior episodes, this is the first time that every aspect of his personality has been displayed at once. His simplicity, his clumsiness and his heroic side. Furthermore, I like the fact that we actually get to see the negative consequences of said clumsiness. Be careful! Uh, whoops! Do some careful! I hope that isn't a bad start to the day for you! Such as Warrior sinking Big Mac's barge, thus costing them the rock contract. Or how about that he nearly crashes into those shrimpers? Had he struck them, he would have likely sunk them. Which as far as we know in this universe, would have most likely killed them. Of course it's not all serious, there are plenty of humorous moments here. I always crack a smile at the scene with Little Ditcher. The Zorin and Izzy dynamic is always hilarious. Hell, anything with Izzy is hilarious. Every character interaction in this episode is strong. From Zorin irritating Big Mac, Grandpa's comforting Big Mac, or how about how everyone reacts to Izzy's stupid idea? I also really love Warrior's hero moment. Up until now, he's only played a part in saving the day. Now he actually saves the day. I remember watching this scene with intense focus as a kid. It's the first time that we hear that ever intense danger theme in full too. Also don't forget, Warrior isn't just saving Izzy, but also Tencent as well as Mighty Mo and Scuttlebutt Pete. Warrior is an episode that lets our beloved striker shine from start to finish. It doesn't present us with anything new, but simply allows the audience to appreciate every aspect of Warrior's character in one cohesive story. One of my personal favourites. When you ask a Tugs fan what their favourite episode in the series is, they'll often place a particular episode in the top three. That being High Tide. I'm happy to say that I count myself among those fans. It is of course the infamous Top Hat story. So, the plot. The tide is higher than it has been in years and making work around the port difficult. Meanwhile, the local steel company is moving to their new works across the bay. The two fleets are competing for the contract to deliver said steel. Zack and Zebedee decide to take a shortcut through the canal and come face to face with Top Hat. Neither side wanting to give way, both charge forward only for the Zed Stacks to forget about the high tide, and thus, Zebedee's giant rig collides with the railway bridge. That's real zero thinking, W. While they're gone for help, a train approaches, and so Tolbat takes it upon himself to haul the rig under the bridge in hopes of holding it up long enough for the train to pass. He does so, but the rig falls, and the bridge collapses. Just when you think things can't get any worse, another train approaches. Just in the nick of time, Top Hat pushes Lord Stinker under the bridge and they manage to catch the train at the last second. There is so much to unpack with this one. The entire bridge sequence is fantastic, for obvious reasons. It's such an intense scene. You can't not have your eyes glued to the TV. Tugs excels at building dread and tension. Combined with the urgent danger theme, you really find yourself rooting for Top Hat in this moment, hoping that he does manage to save the train. Speaking of Top Hat, let's talk about him. I know I talked about him in my previous video, but I'm going to talk about him again. This episode is loved by many, including myself, because of how it develops Top Hat's character. Up until this point, and even at the beginning of this episode, he's almost always been a complete selfish arsehole throughout the whole series. Now seeing him willingly step up to the plate when thrown into a serious situation is just amazing. Top Hat may be a dick on the outside, but deep down he has a good heart and a great work ethic. When put to the test, he shows that he is just as much a star tug as his colleagues. Hell, he even learns to appreciate Lord Stinker in this story, who also gets a tad of development, since it was his idea to be pushed under the bridge, 
despite the imminent danger. Top Hat isn't the only standout of the episode though. The briefing scene at the beginning is full of great banter as per usual. We learn a little more about Zack and his faulty engine. Nothing wrong with it. And it's great to see Big Mac and Warrior working together again. Also, the scene where Ten Cents and Sunshine talk about having a tougher day than Top Hat is just so amusing. High Tide has everything you could want from a Tugs episode. Great character development, hilarious banter, intense action sequences, and phenomenal music. Easily a top 5. Alright, on to quarantine. This is generally regarded as one of the worst episodes of the series. There is an intense heatwave that is making life irritable and hard on everyone. All the while, many incoming ships are being quarantined outside of port, so towage contracts are running short. If that wasn't enough, OJ's engine is playing havoc in its old age. The main reason why most people aren't fond of this episode is because of how rude Captain Star is. And yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Granted, I can understand his point of view. It's blisteringly hot, two of your staff show up late, another is having engine trouble, which is likely costing you money, and your income is lower than usual due to a limited amount of available contracts. The fact that he threatens to scrap the switches isn't really doing him any favours either. You know the scrapyard dealers are looking for useless tugs, don't you? Now next time you're late, I'll ask them what they'll offer for a couple of switches, understand? Personally, I think he's just said that to get his point across, but still, it was uncalled for. Especially when we learn that he was initially going to scrap OJ. Alright, let's move on to some positives. I like that we learn more about OJ, as this is the closest to a spotlight episode that he gets. The scene where he blows out his engine, just to save 10 cents from quarantine, shows us just how selfless he is. He knew what this meant for him, yet he did it anyway. I love the fact that we get the only underwater shot of the series in this episode too. It's also the debut of Burke and Blair, the scrap dealers, and they are as insufferable as you'd expect. Ahoy, Captain Star, sir. Can we get off for our services? We happen to see the subject of our previous visit being toot in old OJ. <laughs> the scenes with Zoran are amusing as always, and the scene where he gets quarantined alongside Nantucket is really satisfying. Another flaw with the episode is the structure. For instance, the Fulton Ferry sinks in this one, but there doesn't seem to be any real consequence to this. It just seems to exist for the point of setting up that OJ's engine is playing up. I imagine there was more in the 20 minute version, but it's never been released, so unless we get it, we won't know. There are some good moments in quarantine, and while I don't outright dislike the episode, it does rank on the lower end of the list for me. Next up is the one and only spooky episode of the show, Ghosts. This is a spectacular episode, which sounds really quite bizarre when you realise that there isn't much of a plot to this one. Winter is approaching, and late one night, fog descends upon the harbour. Travelling home, Big Matt thinks he sees a legendary ghost fleet and is spooked beyond belief. After everyone ends up making fun of him, they will end up having their own experiences witnessing the ghosts the following night, and they're all convinced that the ghosts do in fact exist, until Hercules shows up at the end, and manages to explain almost everything with complete logic. Okay, so the point of this episode is not to tell a great story, or have a deep and meaningful impact. No, its purpose is to bring a sense of atmosphere to the audience watching, and oh boy, this is hands down the most atmospheric episode in the show. In Thomas and Friends, the only spooky episode we'd had up until this point was Ghost Train, which is fantastic in and of itself. And this episode feels like a natural step up in progression and quality from David Mitten and Co. It's almost like a precursor to the scary episodes of Season 5 of Thomas. The fog effects are some of the earliest I've ever seen, yet they're brilliant. It's a testament to why models and real sets are so much more effective than CGI. Musically, Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell once again blew it out of the water. That ominous choir that we hear throughout the episode is absolutely bone chilling. But yet, 
or so beautiful. I don't know how these two musical masterminds managed to create a piece of music that is both beautiful and haunting at once. But hey, they did it. I also think that the voice work here is some of the best we've ever had in the show. The voice cast doesn't get talked about enough in my opinion. Everyone always does a good job, but here, they all manage to perfectly convey the emotions of the characters. Speaking of the characters, I love all of their interactions in this. I love how Sunshine is the only one who seems open-minded to Big Mac's claim about seeing ghosts. I love how OJ comforts Big Mac, only to immediately rip the carpet right out from underneath him. And I of course, love the ever-present Zorin and Izzy dynamic. They end up getting so scared that they put their differences aside and end up going into port together. I also love that Big Mac was chosen as the, for lack of a better word, catalyst for the story. Up until this point in the show, Big Mac has always been shown as this big, rough and tough, almost macho-like character, who was barely phased by anything. Hell, this guy marched out in front of a naval firing practice. But here, we get to see him being vulnerable and scared for his life, and I think that really adds a lot of weight to the intro scene. Someone this tough getting so easily spooked? Wow. The scene with OJ travelling past the cranes is always worthy of note for a particular deleted scene. You know the one, OJ goes crazy and for a split second thinks he sees the ghost of Big Mickey with that horrifying snatcher face. <coughs> I really wish we had the 20 minute version of this episode because I would have loved to have seen it. And of course, we can't not talk about the scene where Ten Cents and Sunshine witness the galleon rise out of the water and they see the face of Neptune. For the late 1980s, the special effects are really something impressive. And the scene is incredible for it. The ambiguousness of this scene is also carried over into the ending, where Hercules manages to explain everything except the face of Neptune. Ambiguity is really effective. Ghosts is a must watch for any Tugs fan. Easily one of the show's best. Time for another funny episode that also manages to be rather dark and tragic, Jinx. This episode introduces perhaps the most relatable character in the show, Boomer. So plot wise, Boomer is found out at sea by the two star switchers. He says that after being sold and having his name changed that he became jinxed and bad unfortunate mishaps keep happening around him. He was drifting out at sea because he wanted a ship to hit him and sink him. In other words, he wanted to die. Yikes, a suicidal character in a kid's show? Man, the kid's shows of the 80s had some serious balls. Now obviously the stars don't believe that Boomer is jinxed, and of course try to help him out. Over the course of the episode, it becomes obvious that the jinx is real, and everyone is forced to accept it. Eventually Captain Star pays to have Boomer rebuilt into a houseboat, and he is moored upriver, where his jinx finally leaves him. Boomer is a great character. I said this in his profile video. When he thanks the Switches for helping him, he reveals that he was depressed because of the trouble the Jinx caused others, as opposed to himself. I think that says a lot about how selfless Boomer really is. Dark depressing stuff aside, there are a lot of funny moments in this episode. Boomer's reactions to virtually every high Jinx are great. The scene where Sunshine proves his theory about Ten Senses Huda triggering the Jinx is my personal favourite moment. Granted, I do wish that we'd gotten to see more of this. Apparently this was the second episode that was filmed, back when the original 30 minute cuts were still planned. So chances are a lot of material was lost, such as the scene where Boomer crashes into Izzy and Blue Nose apparently showing up. Oh yeah, this episode is of course the origin of a meme too. Okay, Boomer. Jinxed is a very enjoyable episode. You can't help but feel bad for Boomer, and in some ways, find him relatable. We've all had a run of bad luck, or been sad and depressed at some point in our lives, right? Time for another dark episode, High Winds. This is one of my personal favourites. This episode is unique, for it's the only episode in the entire show to spotlight a Zed stack, Zebedee. And I have to say, 
that this episode is the main reason as to why Zebedee is one of my all time favourite characters in the series. So plot wise, a massive high wind strikes the port and makes life difficult for everyone. At the same time, a violent and villainous tramp steamer named Johnny Cuba enters the port in hopes of settling a score with his former criminal friend, Captain Zero. During the events of the episode, Johnny ropes Zebedee into helping him, threatening to sink him if he doesn't comply. So Zebedee is now stuck under Cuba's command and forced to steal things such as coal for him. We get to see Zebedee's true colours in this episode. While he is a Z-Stack, deep down, he does mean well. This is also the only time we get to see him interact with the stars when he's by himself, and it is here that we get to see him be a lot more civil. Hi Zebedee! Big Mac, what are Zebedee is a very complex character. He's sort of an underdog with a guilty conscience. You feel bad for him in this situation. He can't afford to not help Cuba due to the imminent danger he poses to him. But you also know that if Captain Zero finds out about what he's doing, then that means serious trouble too. On the subject of the Captain, we don't see him at all in this episode, but we do learn a lot about him. The episode tells us outright that Cuba is an actual gangster. That Johnny Cuba's idea of a business plan was like himself, a gangster. This basically confirms that Captain Zero had, and might still have ties to the Mafia. The episode does come to a satisfying end, when Hercules finds Zebedee with Cuba, and the two manage to arrest and hand Johnny over to the authorities. I do like that Zebedee manages to stand up to Cuba, which is a really satisfying moment, considering how dark and violent the threats Johnny makes to him are. Seeing Zebedee's good sight on display here is really fascinating too. It makes me think that he only acts like a jerk around his colleagues to make his own life easier. We even get to see him save the Starfleet when they're trying to dock the Princess Alice in the Windstorm, which he does with Zoran watching. Imagine the implications that could have had for Zebedee had he not been able to arrest Cuba. I really like the ending to this episode too. Not only do we get a beautiful sunset, but we see Tencent present Zebedee with an offer to join the stars which he naturally turns down. This also ends up being his last speaking role in the show. It leaves you wondering what the production crew might have done with the character had we gotten a second season. We can only wonder. The penultimate episode of the show is upriver. The winter period is finally coming to a close and life is slowly returning to normal. The stars are working on a logging contract, transporting lumber to the sawmills. Unfortunately, a massive logjam forms, slowing down their progress. Big Mac and Sunshine are attempting to clear the jam when the latter gets trapped inside. And since this is Tugs, a fire starts, and it becomes a race against time to save Sunshine before he goes up in flames. Now we're up river, so who do you think comes to the rescue? Why, Billy Shoeback, of course. He blows the dam clear with dynamite. Only problem? The logs end up getting washed away in a rapid current and head straight for Uptown. News reaches the rest of the fleet and Warrior devises a plan to build a barrier across the river to block them out. However, Warrior being Warrior, gets stuck on the wrong side. He almost gets crushed by the logs, but with help from OJ and Top Hat, Warrior manages to divert them into an old warehouse that blows up in spectacular fashion. This episode is non-stop from start to finish. I don't know how they did it, but they really do manage to make the logs pose a serious danger to everyone. I like Big Mac's warning and explanation of how they can pose a threat. I love how serious Sunshine's situation is played out, with the fire progressively getting worse, and Sunshine coughing his guts from inhaling too much smoke. The action sequence at the end where Papa chases after the logs is really intense. And when we see the logs approaching uptown, from what I assume is Warrior's point of view, you really fear for his safety. We've already seen the damage the logs can do at this point, so you really don't know if Warrior's gonna make it. The ending where everyone gains a new respect for Warrior is the main reason why some people find his spotlight episode to be a bit lacking, but I personally don't mind it. Hashtag, Hashtag Warrior is King. King. We also get to see Puffer interact with the stars. This is his only speaking role in the show, and he's a pretty cool character. Also, the winter sets are beautiful. They really do look freezing cold, Upriver is an episode that is sure to entertain. 
Okay, so the final episode is Big Freeze. While the plot of this episode isn't anything groundbreaking, the episode itself is a beautiful end to the series. So in terms of the plot, the port is frozen up and so the tugs are working outside the main harbour. Meanwhile, the SS Vienna is approaching and needs Hercules to tow her in, so she can resupply. However, there's a couple problems. For one, Lily Light's ship is low on fuel, so Tencent and Sunshine need to find a fuel barge. Otherwise, Vienna won't dock and both fleets will lose out on her supply contract. The other issue is the limited number of barges available, which poses an obvious problem. It soon gets dark, and everyone tries to come up with a way to guide Vienna in until the switches arrive. Warrior saves the day yet again by setting fire to his garbage, which provides a beacon just long enough for Ten Cents and Sunshine to bring in an emergency light barge. Vienna arrives and gets resupplied. The episode ends on a beautiful note as both fleets watch her sail off into the night, while we hear a beautiful song playing in the background. I think my favourite thing about this episode is the characters themselves. I love how idiotic Zip and Zog are, since they think that Ten Cents and Sunshine are trying to one-up Zorin, and then they nearly cost both fleets the contract. I love how quick-witted Lily is against Zorin when he tries to sell her his fuel. Half price though, eh, Zorin? Yeah, half price, Zorin. Then we don't say anything about Zip and Zog, okay? <coughs> what? You crook! Well, that's good coming from you, Zorin. Obviously I love Warrior, and I think it's great how he effectively saves the day twice. The ending, while beautiful, is bittersweet, because you know that this is the end of the show, which just sucks. While not the most action-packed or even inspired episode, Big Freeze is a fitting end to one of the most wonderful and overlooked children's shows to have ever existed. Alright, so here's the hard part, ranking all of the episodes. Now remember, I don't outright hate or even dislike any episode of the show. So as we progress up the list, it's just going to get harder to rank them. So at the bottom at number 13 is Quarantine. I doubt many will be surprised by this. The main reason for me as to why it's at the bottom is how loosely the plot is strung together. Obviously I'm not fond of Captain Star in this either, but I don't have quite as much disdain for this episode as other Tugs fans. Number 12 is Jinxed. I know some might consider this a shock, but Jinx was one of the very few episodes that I didn't see until I was an adult. And thus, I simply haven't had as much time to connect with this episode as others. Number 11 is going to Sunshine. It's a good pilot episode, and while all the character interactions are great, I'm placing it here since not much happens in it. Although I will point out that I do really love the ending speech that Captain Star gives to the fleet and everyone welcoming Sunshine. Number 10 is Big Freeze. It has the best and most beautiful ending the show could have asked for, and has some really fun character moments. But I'm placing it here, since like Sunshine, not much overall happens in it. Number 9 goes to Trapped. It is a great episode with a ton of humour, but while the ending is memorable, I simply get more overall memorability out of the other episodes. Number 8 belongs to Pirate. I always enjoy a dark episode, and this is hands down the darkest. I don't have anything else to add. It's an enjoyable episode from start to finish. Number seven is Upriver. I love the action in this one. It's intense and exciting from start to finish. I'm simply placing it here for the same reason as Jinxed. I don't have as many fond memories with this one due to seeing it much later in life. Number six is going to Regatta. I will always appreciate the episode for how it takes the time to actually give us a plot that focuses on side characters, as opposed to mains. Number 5 is going to go to High Winds. I like this one about as much as the last two, but I'm placing it higher because of what it does for Zebedee's character. If it weren't for this episode, he wouldn't be in my top 5 favourite characters. Number 4 is Ghosts. Not much of a plot, just atmosphere. Along with the spooky episodes of Thomas, this one always resonates with me and I think it would be criminal of me not to put it in the top 5. Number 3 is going to Munitions. The most explosive episode of the show. If you ask any Tugs fan what their favourite episode is, this one will almost always come in the top 3, and for good reason. Number 2 is going to go to Warrior. Some of you might have expected this to be number 1, since Warrior is my favourite character, 
and while he will always be the king to me, there is one episode that I simply get more memorability from. And at number one is High Tide. I remember watching the VHS that this one came on more than any other, where it was the first one on the tape. Topat's hero moment is oh so satisfying. It has some really fun character moments. Also the action sequences are amazingly well done and intense. Whenever I think of Tugs, I think of High Tide. This episode is Tugs Incarnate. Okay, I hope you all enjoy listening to me ramble about this little show from the 80s, about boats with faces. Feel free to let me know what your personal rankings are for each episode, as I'm really interested to find out what your favourite episodes from the show are. As always, thank you very much for watching. Now until next time, I've been Cinders and Ashes UK, you've been awesome, and have a great day. Bye!